So now that we've reviewed the best ways to improve hand warmer performance and indeed store life to them, we've come a long way with uh, an esoteric subject and uh, things have only gotten better. However, it could even still get better and we could move beyond that point because there's still a few problems with using the form factor that the hand warmers come in that we could address and make better. So just to review, one of the more important things is to add proper platinum catalyst with real platinum in it and not uh, ones from China that are probably uh, composed of iron and uh, maybe if you're lucky, lucky vanadium and maybe some palladium. So that's the first one we've done and then we've moved to carbon felt and uh, what I'm finding is is I don't think that a lot of people appreciate how important the carbon felt is for repacking the reservoir and that's based upon the number of orders that I get that are just for the platinum which is a good idea and um, I'm not sure maybe maybe it's felt that um, this carbon felt is uh, another form of snake oil that uh, just trying to pedal but if you think about it and do the science behind it the scorching in the cotton is not a great thing to be happening and there's even other benefits to carbon felt the cotton it doesn't have such as uh, odor filtering and um, I would guess that absorption and uh, capillary action and so on leading to better vaporization of the hydrocarbons would be a factor to look into as well. All right, anyway, we've covered those in other videos and what I want to get into now is some of the inherent problems. And this is where, although I'm not a big Zippo fan, especially when you consider your value for money, the uh, amount of money you pay for a Zippo compared to the advantages that you get over a generic Chinese hand warmer, I don't think is worth it. However, I will say that the Zippos, which apparently are now made in China as well, um, the thing I do like about them is, is the head is a better fit and when you're repacking the catalyst, that design of the head holds the catalyst material in better. So the Zippo wins on that count. Where I don't like it is that's going to be involved with the next mod which is I'm going to introduce which involves the shoulders. So the problem with the Chinese ones is you'll often find that the heads fall off very easily and um, you may find that if you're involved in a rigorous outdoor activity you hear your hand warmer rattling around because the head has fallen off into the cap and you're, that's what you're hearing and you have no more heat. So we're going to address that and the other thing that can be improved even when the head is on and whether it's a Zippo or a Chinese because it's not a very good fit and what we would like to have is a situation where we're not pulling the head off all the time and therefore increasing our chances of insulting the catalyst material by either bumping it or prodding it or getting something caught in it and so on and the other thing it would be nice to be able to increase the heat transmission between the body and the head so when the exothermic reaction is taking place if it conducts the heat down into the reservoir more efficiently you will get more efficient evaporation and uh, you'll get more vapors you'll get more heat overall it's a win situation if you don't have to keep pulling that head off and if you get better conductivity and thermal transmission from the head into the reservoir body so how can we improve that well first of all we have to accept that we're not going to, if we don't take the head off, we're going to have to fill it somehow. And how are we going to fill it? We don't want to be putting gas through the head. That's where I'm thinking that uh, I've seen other hand warmers 
There's a Korean one, I believe, that um, is a fancy one that has a rubber door there. And I believe there's a British one that, that has a rubber valve in it. And uh, those are great ideas. So we got a Chinese one or we have a Zippo and we'd like to have that feature for ourselves. So what are we gonna do? Well, some pretty simple household tools and we can go about retrofitting our existing one. So first of all, uh, for the head, what I wanna do is get that on there and I've got a couple of things that are possibilities. Uh, this is stuff I had laying around that I plan to give it a try. And um, the, probably the best is going to be this thermal glue here. Uh, I like this stuff because it uh, has a high temperature strength. So uh, this is used for bonding and water and oil proofing uh, electric heaters and high temperature apparatus, electrical pots, irons, it'll moisture proof, um, it doesn't arc, and so on. So this is the K704. It's a Basically, it's an RTV silicone rubber sealant. It's non-toxic. Uh, it doesn't pollute. It's got uh, great characteristics for what we want to do with this hand warmer head. So I'm going to give that a try. I use that with uh, a lot of my projects. Mainly brought it in for working with LED lights and drive, putting the drivers and so on in there. So that's one. If you don't have any of that, um, I'm thinking that maybe even a thermal heatsink compound that you use on the CPU of your computer, uh, if you've got some of that, it's easy to access. You might have friends that can give you some. Give that a try. It won't glue the head on as well, but we do want to be able to take the head off again when we need to replace the catalyst. So here's all examples of, here's another uh, heatsink compound that I use for this is what I use for seating drivers in LED lights. It does a real good job of holding the driver down into the pill of the LED. So I think it would work well for holding. A good place to start to figure out where you're going to put your grommet is to place it onto the shoulder of your reservoir and just see how your fit's going to be. And you want enough room to make sure that it won't obstruct the cap and I'd like it as far away from the catalyst head as I can to stop it from melting and maybe even if it just is a little bit over enough to might help hold the cap on uh, as well so I think what I'm going to do is try and get it even so it's just flush with the shoulders which is going to be right about there and then I'm going to mark that point with a center punch and then drill right at where I've got my pilot uh, punch hole started. When it comes time to make your large hole, first of all, take the grommet that you're using and measure it. I'm getting about 6.8 millimeters for this center diameter on that grommet, and I'm going to want to pick a drill bit that is slightly smaller, and this guy seems to uh, come close at about 6.3. So now I'm going to finish the hole off with a larger hole and then we'll see how the grommet seats into that. So now you can see I've got the hole in the shoulder of my hand warmer unit. It's a bit rough on the edges so before I try and put the grommet in I'm going to take the uni bit and just bevel the edges of that 
to just smooth them out a little bit. If you don't have a uni bit, you could probably use a file or use your imagination. So the grommet seemed to get pressed in there with very little issues. It seems to be pretty solid. And now the next phase will be to take my fuel container, which is the one I prefer. This is what I've got from the vaping community. And see how that fits into the hole. It seems to work. And now I'm going to put in about 25 mils of fluid. I just realized there's still one more or a couple more outstanding issues. The next one is going to be getting this head on there and sealing it on because I'm pretty confident that my little grommet adaptation is going to work there. Before I seal it on, I'm going to get some proper platinum catalyst, which would be this, and I will cut that pad in half and insert it into here. And then I'm going to save the old Chinese catalyst because we've been doing tests on them to see what they've really got in them and you can check the website when we get those results back to see what they are. This platinum amount of platinum, uh, I'm going to cut that pad in half and then I'm going to remove the keeper that's down in the bottom of this head and uh, I'm going to keep this keeper here in order to replace it so I can push the catalyst out from the bottom. There's the old one. And I'm gonna put the new stuff in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now if you want to go for high performance and add more catalyst, refer to the right hand sidebar with the comments that were made by Jordan Patrick from Advanced Platinum Systems about what happens when you do that. If you want higher heat and you don't need as much time on your burn volume, you could actually do one head with double the amount of required catalyst material. It's up to you and uh, So now that I've got double the amount of catalyst into the head and I've got the keeper in place, I've got it nicely all tucked in properly, that's what it can look like. And now what I want to do is get the head bonded better to the body so that it'll transmit and conduct the heat better, which I expect will improve performance. So to do that, 
I'm going to use one of She Who Must Be Obeyed's skewers to apply the glue or maybe better still one of those little tubes from the air duster bottles. So, I was sitting here waiting for the glue to dry on the head of the other one. thought I'd like to go for coffee with a friend, but unfortunately I don't have any friends, or at least anyone that I know would tolerate me long enough to go for coffee. She who must be obeyed isn't home, sitting here by myself. So I said to myself, Self, maybe you could put one of those grommets in the Zippo and see if that would work and if it's a feasible project. So lo and behold, with all the junk on the dining room table, I took advantage of it and it only took about a minute to get the next grommet into the Zippo, which to me seems to be the big highlight of my day. Got the glue on there now. Again, that's 704 RTV. However, if you don't have any, go to your local computer geek and see if he's got some thermal compound for putting the CPU cooler on top of the CPU on his computer's motherboard. Guessing on these little six hour guys that will be more of a challenge. I don't think you're gonna get a grommet into what's left on that shoulder. So um, I suppose you could play with the idea of putting a hole in the bottom and then sealing it with a plug after you've put your fuel in. Uh, that'll be another project to see if I come up with anyone has any ideas as to some way to do that with the six hour guys. Well, I decided that the benefits of having a quick refill in the bottom of the six hours compact hand warmer was worth it. So I've added a grommet to it and I've added fuel and so far so good. Nothing is leaking out. The next will be to field test it and see how it works. But I'm thinking things are looking good so far and the advantage is now I can refill that without even taking the head off. I could top it up while it's still burning from the bottom, theoretically. We'll see if that actually is true or not, but I think once it's back in this pouch, it should be working fine. I couldn't wait, so I fired up the red one and thought I would take a temperature and see if I could cook beef patties on it, because I don't think I'm going to be getting sushi tonight. She must be obeyed, just came in the door, caught me doing this, and... Um, if any of you have a basement that I might be able to live in, please send me a note. Anyway, um, if you want to cook beef, 133 Fahrenheit on the red guy. And I'm going to next try maybe the blue guy. <clears throat> so with about a quarter tank of fuel, this uh, compact six hour one is settling out around 129 Fahrenheit. A little bit less than the other one, but respectable. And um, I suspect if I had some more fuel in there, maybe created a few more fumes to vaporize, it would make it up into the 130 something. So the thought occurred to me that an obvious question is going to arise as to what are the consequences of leaving an open hole in the reservoir for fuel to potentially leak out of and uh, very good question it takes me back to a couple of years ago when I ordered the first of these compact ones from China and I started filling it up and what 
I found was that the fuel started leaking out of this interface right in here. It came out as I filled it and leaked all over the place and then I had a flame when I was lighting the top. So I sent the Chinese seller a note and I said, gee, uh, your hand warmers are no good, uh, they're not sealed, they leak. And he sent me a note back and said, that's because you're overfilling it. So then I measured it so that it, I didn't put in so much that it leaked out and indeed they did work properly after that and it did teach me the importance of having the right amount put in. So I think, hmm, I guess it doesn't matter if there are some ingress or egress points in the way that the body's constructed. Um, the ceiling on the other ones is incidental and uh, on the Chinese ones I do believe that when you're in here that can actually also leak as well. So yesterday after I finished I took this one and after I had finished my mod to it I took my bottle and I proceeded to fill it by holding it I'll have to zoom out as much as possible here to illustrate this and I filled it like that holding it upside down and squeezing fluid in well of course what that did was then the fuel went straight to the head as you anyone with a brain bigger than mine would anticipate gravity and all that so I ended up with a saturated head saturated full of naphtha so then even though I didn't even use the full 15 mils so the result was is when I tried to light it I ended up with a flame 24 hours later and you still have the flame so this has been unusable for 24 hours you can't even burn that off and if you try to you're just going to wreck the catalyst so I'll leave that sit another 24 and hopefully eventually it'll all evaporate off and then I can start again and use it so does that mean that putting the grommet in the bottom is a bad idea? Well, perhaps. It depends on your perspective and what you're prepared to do. So now, this one, which I didn't overfill, first of all, what I did was with that yesterday was I filled it from the side and I only put about a quarter in and that way I reasoned that the fuel was dropping down into that. But that would also mean that I could never fill the whole reservoir each time I filled without facing the same problem of saturating the head. So now what I've decided to try is the 15 mil fill bottle and taking it from below because you can squeeze these so you end up with a situation like this where I now squeeze the fuel in to the hand warmer from below and what that's going to do is um, get about maybe 10 mils into the hand warmer with all the squeezing I can possibly do and now you'll see that I'm left with maybe, what's that, about three mils left over. I've maybe gotten 10 to 12 in there, which should be sufficient for the small one. And if I was going out and I wanted the full six hours, I'd probably stick another, top that up into half, and then do it again so that I know I was full. Um, now, as you see, <clears throat> I've had no leakage out the bottom since doing that it's all nice and dry at the grommet still and um, we'll see if any fuel saturated the head here no flames that's what we want to see and we just want to see that catalyst start to glow and when it starts to glow chances are you've already started your act you've activated your <coughs> reaction and it's it's off to the races so that's how I recommend that if you do decide to go the grommet route with this guy then um, 
you're going to need to fill from the bottom up, keeping the head and the whole hand warmer in a vertical position and force it in from the bottom and then that should work.